Well, good Tuesday morning. I'm Marshall Blaylock. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church here in Charleston. I'm here in the sanctuary of First Baptist with my four colleagues from St. John's and Holy Trinity and First Scott's and St. Michael's. And it's, it's a joy to, for us to be able to lead these devotionals each day during the Lenten season. And so today we're in the 22nd Psalm, the whole, the whole season of Lent, and in the 10th verse. And what I want you to see this morning is that as Jesus began to pray the 22nd Psalm on the cross, in that very first verse, the most well-known verse, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's our belief that, that this whole chapter was on his heart as he prayed on the cross. And while it's not recorded that he said these words out loud, uh, it's, it's evident to us that Jesus prays this prayer. And as you hear these verses each day, you can see how they apply so perfectly to his life and to his experience on the cross. So Jesus prays this Psalm and this particular verse. And th this verse was written by David uh, and spoke to David's life. It was applicable to David's life. In truth, 2000 years later, it's applicable to our lives too. But when you see it written a thousand years earlier, this particular verse speaks exactly to Jesus' life on the cross. And it makes you admire how the Word of God is so true and so rich and so deep. We see it here in verse, verse 10. And so in the text it says, From birth I was cast upon you, from my mother's womb you've been my God. And again, this was true of David. It's actually true of you. But here, you think about this, Jesus is on the cross. And as he prays, he's, he looks, he can see his mother, and he says, from my mother's womb, you've been my God. She's right there. She is right there. So in this text, you see these two great truths of the Bible, the incarnation of Christ and his birth, and yet now, the atoning work of Christ on the cross. And you, you can sense Mary's agony in this moment. You can sense the, the endurance of Christ as he bore the sins of the world on that cross. And he's saying, from the, even before I was born, you're my God, you're my Father in heaven. And here as Jesus gives his life on the cross for you and for me, he's professing again his absolute faith and trust in his Father in heaven. We see in the text the providence of God. And he reminds us, even now, in our own lives, even from before we're born, God has his eye upon us. His love is set on us. And God has been with us from the very moment our lives began. You see, it's providence and goodness. I don't know what you're facing today. Who knows what's going on in your life, but God certainly knows it. And you are likely aware of what's going on, but understand this. There's a God in heaven who's at work in your life this morning in ways you can absolutely trust him. In this agonizing moment on the cross, Jesus once again declares his trust in his Father. And if at that moment he could make that declaration, here in our lives, we get to do the same because of Christ's work on the cross, his finished work on the cross, and the power of the resurrection, his love and grace comes to our lives. We can trust him. So no matter what you're facing today, there's a God in heaven who from before you were born has set his love on you. His providence is at work in your life every day, and you can trust him. So this morning, place your trust in him, the one who knew you from before you were born, and the one in Jesus who gave his life on that cross to save you. God's blessing for a great day. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're coming to you from First Scott's Sanctuary on Meeting Street. God's blessing.